the today's topic in economics is money. Now, when we talk about money, um, this topic is money. Yeah, it is where we have money. So, when we talk about money, money is, yeah, what we spent, yes, but that is not all about money. Money is anything that is generally acceptable as a means of payment and as a medium of exchange. So this is money here to this topic. So yeah, they said money is anything. Money is anything that is generally acceptable. Money is anything that is generally acceptable. Or money is anything that is generally accepted for payments. So it means whatever the public has accepted as money, it's what we call money. But before there's gonna be general acceptability of money by the public, it means the government of that country, of the nation, of the economy, has backed it up by law. So I would rather say money is what the law says it is. So it means whatever we call money, it is called money because the law, it has legality. It has, it has the backing of the law of the nation. That's why it is called money. So I said here that money is anything that is generally accepted as a means, as accepted as a means of payment, it's right. So we move on to Barter. So before the existence of money, before the existence of money, there was what we call the barter system. There was what we call the barter system. Before the existence of money, there's a barter system. So when I talk about the barter system, barter system here they wrote an economic trading system in which goods and services are traded directly with another goods and services without the use of money. There was no money. So it was exchange of goods for goods, exchange of services for services. That's what we call barter. But in the course of using barter, there, there are different problems that barter would really create because it is, it is not money. It's, it doesn't have value. It cannot be measured. So these are problems that barter could create. So here they said the limitations, the limitations of barter system, the limitation of barter system. One, fixing a rate of exchange. It is not money. So we wouldn't be able to fix a rate like, oh, it is five, oh, it is 10, oh, it is 15. It's not possible to be done. So we don't have an ex ex exact rate for whatever we are exchanging. If we are exchanging a pen for probably a marker. So I wouldn't know the price of a pen, nor know the price of a marker. So it's difficult for us to measure the value of what we are exchanging. So that means one person would be advantageous than another. So that's why it is a problem using butter. Two, that's about fixing a rate of exchange. So we don't know the value. We don't, we don't know the amount of what we are exchanging. We can't measure what we are exchanging. So that's the first problem about butter. Two, finding someone to swap with. When you're talking about finding someone to swap with, it means you need to look out for someone who have what you need and who needs what you have. So there must be double coincidence, double coincidence of wants. That's what it means by finding someone to swap with, double coincidence of wants. So you need someone who has, someone who has what you have, who has what you need, and who needs what you have. That's double coincidence, which is always very, very difficult. So if I have a pen, right? If I have a pen and I need maybe a book, I will need to find someone who needs a pen and have a book which might not be easily found. So that's why it's a problem. That's the second problem about barter system. And the third one is trying to say, because it's an exchange. So every now and then we have to exchange a good, for, a good for another good. We have to exchange services for other services. So there's no point saving anything. So whatever you have will definitely go for others. So in as much as you would always want to get something new, something, to live with. So it means whatever you have today, you might have to exchange it for other things tomorrow. So there's nothing we could save. We cannot save anything. Unlike now that we have money, if you don't want to buy anything, you save your money. And, but then during the butter system era, there was no way to save because whatever you have, you have to use it as an exchange. So then what is the solution? So now that there's a problem, we have problems about butter. So we need to find solution, and the solution is what we call money. So the solution to butter, to the problems 
butter has created was the introduction of money. So what is money? Like I told you earlier, money is what the law says it is. So money is whatever, that's why we say money is what anything that is generally accepted as a medium of payment by the public and has the backing of the law. That is what money is. So now that we know what money is, what are the functions of money? So we are here now, the functions of money. So what are the functions of money? We have the functions of money here. So first we start with medium of exchange. Because we call it money, it must be used as what? Well, as a medium of exchange, medium of exchange. What is a medium of exchange? It means money must perform the function of exchange. So whenever I need to get a pen, instead of me to exchange it using a marker or a wristwatch to exchange it, I have to pay for it. So in the course of me paying, that means I am paying and I'm getting something back in return. That is an exchange. Just like in business, that it involves the buying and selling of goods and services. So in money must perform that function where whenever you need to buy or you need to sell. So I am going to give you that product. And what you have to give me back in exchange or in return is money. So money serves as a medium of exchange. Two, as a unit of account. Money as a unit of account. It means money is what? It has value. Unlike when we don't, unlike during the butter era, during the butter era, that we don't have, we are unable to measure the value of money. We can't, we don't know what money is. But now, with you need to account. So you know what the value of the money is. You know it has different denominations. You know that whenever you have to buy something, maybe a pen, it is two dollars. Yes, you know. Or maybe a marker, it is one dollar. Now you know. Unlike during the butter butter era. We don't know, we don't have figures, we don't have values, we can't measure whatever we sell. But these days, money has performed the function of giving value to money. That's what we call unit of account. So now that we know, the third one, the store of value. So because it is money, it can be saved, unlike during the battle era, here that, look here that said, trying to save. We, are, we won't be able to save with butter system because for every now and then whatever we have we have to exchange it for other goods but with money which has come into place which has replaced butter era or butter system now we can save our money we can the value does not change even for a longer period of time so if you have if you are keeping ten dollars now the ten dollars will still be the ten dollars except if there's inflation but even if there's no inflation or deflation in the economy. If the economy is fine, the money still serves as the same value of what you have. So you are able to save your money and it does not lose its value. $10 will always be $10. $5 will always be $5. Unlike then that you can't save things. So now, whenever you say, if you, have, if you are saving $5, if you save $100,000 today, in the next 10 years, you're still gonna get your $100,000 saved. That is what it means by the store of value. And the fourth one, which is the last one here, is the standard of deferred payment. Money serves as a standard of deferred payment. With the existence of money, with the introduction of money, you can buy goods now and pay at a later date. That means you can buy on credit and pay with money. So now that there is money available, now that we have money, which has replaced the exchange or the butter system or the butter era, we can buy goods today and pay at a later date. That is what we buy, standard of deferred payment. So you can make a payment, you can buy some things today and defer the payment later in the future. That means money will pay, money can be used to pay our creditors. That is what it simply means. So the first one is that we can use money to buy goods and services. The second one is that money can be measured. So we can use money to measure whatever goods and services we are buying. With money, it has, different denominations. So we can know, we, we, are, we can know now, we know now that whatever we are buying, it has its value, it has its amount. So money serves as a unit of account. The third one, money as a store of value. So if you are saving 100,000 today, you will still have your 100,000 if you are getting it after tomorrow. Or whenever you want to get it at a future date, at a future date. And the last one, standard of deferred payment, I told you earlier, money can, 
be used to pay our creditors. So that's all about the functions of money. Now we go to the characteristics of money. So when you talk about the characteristics of money, here we have them. These are the characteristics of money. So these are the characteristics of money. This is where we have now the characteristics of money. So when we talk about the characteristics of money, we're talking about the, the function of the features we see that makes us to know that, oh, this is money. So these are what we call the characteristics of money. So what are the features of money or what are the characteristics of money? That when we see it, it we already know it is money. The first one is acceptability, acceptability. So for acceptability, what does that imply? Based on the, based on the definition of money, that is money is anything that is generally acceptable or accepted as a means of payment. So whatever we call money, it must be generally accepted by the public as a means of payment or a medium of exchange. So that's acceptability. It must be generally accepted by the public. So whatever we call money, if I am giving it out to you in, in, in the course of me buying something from you, or you are paying me because you are my debtor, I must accept it because it is money. The second one, divisibility. So when you talk about divisibility, here it means whatever we call money must have different denominations. It must, be, it must be able to be used for change. So what does that imply? It means that money must have different denominations like a one dinner, a $10, $5, $50, Euros, 10 pounds, and the rest. So money must be able to have different denominations. That's another characteristic of money. So before we call it money, it must be divisible. The third one, durability, durable. So money must be durable. What does that imply? Money must be able to have a very long lifespan. Money must not get spoiled easily. So whatever we call money, it must not be easily spoiled. So it must stay for a long or for a very long period of time. That is what durability means. It must not get spoiled easily. The fourth one, scarce, scarcity. So when I talk about scarcity, what does that imply? It implies that whatever we call money, it must not be seen everywhere. We can, it must not be littered around. It must be worked for. It must be earned. It must be relatively scarce. So whatever we call money must not be something that we see everywhere we go to. It has to be earned. It has to be worked for. We have to really work for it if we want it to be money, if it's money. So it's not something, it must have value. And having value means that it cannot be seen everywhere. So everywhere you go to, you see, you see it on the ground. No, that's not money. Money must be seen. It must be relatively scarce. It must not be seen everywhere. It has to be worked for. The fifth one, portability. So when you talk about portability, what does that imply? It means that whatever we call money, it must be easily carried about. It must not be so heavy for us. That's why these days we have the, the, the cards. We have the credit cards, which serves as another medium of uh, another means of payment we have the currencies we have the the, the night we have the the currencies now instead of having the coins so coins are heavy so it has now these days we don't talk about coins no more we talked about we talk about currencies like uh, paper money that's because those ones are easily easily carried about and that's why we have higher denominations so that whatever we put in pocket is not going to be so heavy for us. So for portability, it means that whatever we call money, it must be easily carried about. And another one is uniformity. What is uniformity? Money must, whatever we call money, must have the same size, the same color, the same shape, and it must look identical. So if I have $5 now, the $5 I have in Libya must be the same $5 in America, must be the same $5 in Nigeria, it must be the same five dollars in Sweden or wherever. The ten euros, the ten euros in Libya must be the same ten euros in America, the same ten euros wherever in the world. So that is what we mean by uniformity. So whatever we call money, it must have, it must be identical. It must have the same size, the same shape, the same color, and the same physical appearance. So that's all about money. 
If there's any question, please do not hesitate to send me a message. So I'm quickly going to do a recap again. We have the butter. What is butter? Before the existence of money, there was butter system. What is butter? Butter is what the exchange of goods and services for goods and services without the use of money. There was no money, so we use butter system. So because of the problems of butter, that was why there is the introduction of money. So what are the problems of butter? We have the fixing rate of exchange, which means that with butter system, we are unable to get the real value of whatever we exchange. So it means someone will be someone will be advantageous than another. Two, finding someone to swap with, which means whenever because it is butter system, we need double coincidence of ones. That means I have to find someone who has what I need and who needs what I have, which might be so difficult. And the third one is trying to save because it is butter. We won't be able to save nothing. Every now and then we have to exchange goods for goods. So what is the solution about these problems? What is the solution? The solution about butter system is the introduction of money. The introduction of money. So what is money? Money is said here to be what? That anything that is generally accepted for payment. And I said earlier that money is what? What the law says it is. That means money is anything that is generally acceptable. As a, means of, as a means of payment or medium of exchange, and it's bagged by the law. So that is what money is. And for the functions of money, we talked about it earlier. The functions of money, we talked about it earlier. We said money serves out as a medium of exchange. It means whether, whatever we need to buy in terms of goods and services, we use money to buy. Money serves as a unit of account, which means whatever we call money, it must be measurable. We have the five dollars, we have the two dollar, two dinners, we have one dollar, we have 10 pounds, we have 10 euros, we have 50 euros, we have 20 euros. That is a unit of account. So whatever we buy, it has value. So money must serve as a function of having a, a value for whatever we buy. The third one is the store of value. So for the store of value, it means that the money we have today, if you are saving it today, if you are saving 10,000 today, to be the 10,000 again in the next two years, in the next three years, your 10,000 will still be intact that because it is money. Then we go to the characteristics of money. We talked about acceptability, which means generally acceptable. So whatever we call money must be generally accepted when it's been tendered at any point in time. Two, divisibility. Whatever we call money, whatever we call money, it must have different denominations and it must be used for change. Three, durability. So when we talk about durability, it means that money must have a long lifespan. It must not get spoiled easily. The, the, the fourth one, scarce, scarce, scarcity. Whatever we call money must be relatively scarce. We must not see it littered around. It has to be worked and, and be earned for. Portable, portability. So whatever we call portable, whatever we call money, it must be easily carried around. It must not be so heavy for us to carry. So these are the this is the recap of what about money? So if there's any question, you can send it to the comment section of my YouTube channel. Thank you.